Okay. Hi, Dr. Mandel. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Dr. Stephen Mandel from Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles with our weekly live stream. And uh, if I look a little strange today, we've had quite an adventure. Los Angeles, where nothing bad ever happens. The power went out. It's raining like cats and dogs, and the power's gone out. And we had a full complement of patients. People have come from as far away, literally, as Australia to get their infusions, and they have plans. They can't just, they can't abide a power outage. We were really fortunate. We planned for this. Our monitors are, uh, our monitors are battery powered. Our pumps are battery powered. We have emergency lighting. We just did it. It was really fun. It was a little strange because we didn't have house lights. So we had flashlights and, and emergency lights. But everybody got taken care of. I'm very pleased to say, with actually very little delay. I've tried to pick a particular topic for each week. And this week I wanted to talk about suicide. Depression and suicide are intimately related. Unfortunately, often people who are depressed get so feeling of hopelessness, feeling of helplessness, feeling of worthlessness, so isolated that they attempt to do themselves in. About 125 people every day in this country do take their own lives. Hundreds and hundreds more attempt to do so. 44,000 of us take our lives every year. About 20% of them, or 15% of them anyway, are military or former military. And it's just a shame that they don't have access to this treatment. Because ketamine, as wonderful as it is for depression, is even more remarkable for suicidality. Ketamine just amazingly gets rid of suicidal thinking. Even in the few patients whose depression returns, their suicidality does not return. It's almost a one and done. They get their ketamine and they no longer wish to harm themselves. I really am a very strong advo advocate for ketamine for suicide. Now it's hard to get people who are suicidal to come in. They often isolate. They have often run out of hope. But this is really something very important that friends and family know about because this is a life-saving treatment for those people. And in that regard, friends and family, I wanted to thank the many of you who've said nice things about me on Yelp. And I don't want to thank you so much for saying nice things about me, um, although it's very kind of you to do so. But doctors are in an awkward position today where patients are not always so trusting of them. Patients are really very reliant on what other patients say. And patients are often very afraid to take the plunge to try this treatment. When they learn from another patient what it's like, in really gritty, authentic terms, as you can see on my Yelp reviews, it really encourages them to take the shot, to take the chance to try ketamine for their own depression. And almost always they're glad they did. More than four out of five times, they're very glad they did. As I say, for suicide, it's even more so. Now, I, I want to know if we have any questions. Are you folks behind the camera? Did you have any questions come in? Just checking that now. I don't see any, but I, I do have some questions myself, and I'm sure that I will speak to uh, some of our viewers. I don't know if you mentioned a specific number um, for a success rate with suicidality versus depression. I know you're saying that people who suffer from suicidality respond even more commonly or more often than those suffering from depression. Do we have rough estimates of what those, what the difference is? 
Well, I'll tell you, Sam, uh, and I have to preface this by saying the number is so good that people are incredulous about it. Uh, not only patients, but colleagues. And I say here in our clinic, we're getting better than an 80% success rate with depression. Actually, it's 83%. We're getting a 90% success rate in helping people to resolve and get rid of their impulses to hurt themselves. Ketamine really works remarkably, nine, nine out of 10 times for suicide. And I really appreciate Grace Lyons who just asked a question. She's our first question today uh, from the audience. And thank you very much for watching, Grace. And she's asking, how do your patients know when they need more ketamine so they don't get so low again? And that's an excellent question, uh, Grace. A real good question. And we are pioneering the use of something called the ketamine monitor, which actually sends people a text message every day at a time of their choosing. And they pick a number from one to 10, being a low mood be one, feeling super would be 10. And they text it back and they're done. It's really simple, painless, easy. We graph that. And the information from one day may not sound very meaningful but aggregating this across days. And we know when people's moods are beginning to sag. Then we can speak with them e about either coming in for boosters or about using lozenges because we also have a program where patients can, uh, can receive lozenges which they can take at home. And the lozenges are really sufficiently powerful to lift their depression but they really work very well to maintain a lifted depression once it's been maintained. The benefits of the infusion are extended many fold in most patients by the, by the lozenges. It's almost like a hamburger helper for ketamine as a mood elevator. And why don't you tell our patients and, and Grace in particular who had the question a little bit more about ketamine monitor because the daily mood question is a very powerful feature but there are more uh, aspects of it as well that we utilize, correct? Well, on that same graph that includes people's daily assessment of their mood, we send them a scale of suicidality every two weeks. And we also graph that. And we also include on the graph whether they've gotten boosters and when. So we know pretty much where people are. Now, of course, for people who are our patients, we talk to them also. The nurses talk to them, I talk to them. I give everybody my cell phone. I'm wanting to be in communication with my patients. It's very important. We also give them an aftercare guide, which really helps to maintain their benefit. But the question wasn't what maintains the benefit. The question was, how do we know? when it's not being maintained. And we know be, because of these daily assessments and bi-weekly suicide tests and phone calls and by the fact that patients are really encouraged to call me if they have a problem. That's, that's excellent. And the, the suicide test which you mentioned, I think the, the uh, test for that is the PHQ-9, is that correct? That is correct. And how do pay, people take that? That also comes to them by way of text? Uh, it comes to them with a, with a link, yeah, that they can do on their phone or on their computer, yeah. Wow. Now, uh, we have another question and very much appreciated from uh, Lisa Gendati. And uh, thank you for watching, Lisa, and for bringing a really another great question. Um, Lisa is asking, what percentage of ERs across the country use ketamine for suicidal patients? And really, honestly, another really great question. Lisa, that is a good question. I would love to know the answer to that. I, I don't think, except that on an experimental basis or in an individual practitioner's hands, I'm not aware of any emergency room. There was a study recently out of emergency rooms where patients who came in complaining of impulses to harm themselves were given intramuscular ketamine and discharged home with an appointment to see psych on Monday. These are people coming in over the weekend. And this was pretty radical and was only done for a few patients as part of a study. And these people did not do any self-harm. They avoided the stigma of a 5150. 
they avoided the cost of spending the weekend in the hospital, and they all went to psych Monday, ready to work on what was ailing them, what was suffering, what was causing them their suffering. So it's been done, and it should be done, but I'm not aware of it being done. You know, speaking of visits to the ER and ketamine and suicidality, is there really anything else that you're aware of that works quite so effectively and so quickly for suicidality? There is nothing. And it's a shame that this isn't more widely appreciated and that we're not more widely implementing the fact. This is not an opinion or a guess or a hope. Ketamine eliminates suicidal thinking. I say 90%. Nobody that says under 60%. It's just amazing, and it should be available. It's quick, and it's sure. Yeah, and what do you think some of the barriers are that's keeping it from becoming more widely used? Because for some of those watching, they may be wondering, you know, it's fast, it's effective. What's the holdup? No one is promoting it. Ketamine is, is not a patented drug. It's out of patent. So no, there's no manufacturer that um, stands to benefit. Uh, there's not a lobby of the suicidal who want to see effective treatment. Bereaved families don't make good lobbyists. And they often feel very much alone. But this is a national problem. 44,000 people a year, over a million a year attempts. It's really time something systemic was done. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I hope, and I know you do as well, Dr. Manuel, that this will continue to gain traction and popularity among those who are supporting the suicidal uh, patients and hospitals and elsewhere and making something that really is safe and effective available to them, at the very least as an option, if not uh, something that everyone does almost uh, automatically. Well, I want to make that, I want to emphasize that point. This treatment, unlike most of what's out there for depression and suicidality, this treatment will not harm anyone. It might not help, but it will not hurt you. And you'll know whether you're benefiting very soon unlike anything else out there. So I hope you'll try it if you need it. I hope you'll tell others who need it to try it. And I hope you'll urge those people who's, who you get to talk to about your opinion to let the light in on this one. We don't have to have a power failure or taking care of depression and suicidality or concern. Thank you very much, Dr. Mandel, and I know it's been a busy Friday, especially with losing the power, and really pretty remarkable that you're able to just keep it going and, and treat all your patients, and actually continue to run on time, if I might add, uh, which I uh, am a little proud of myself. Uh, any other uh, closing thoughts you want to say, or you want to let people know when they can catch you next? I'm really pleased that you joined me. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'm here at 3 p.m. on Fridays, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time every Friday. I really look forward to tuning to your tuning in and asking questions. Yeah, I, we lo also, I love the interaction. Yeah, and I really want to thank Grace uh, and Lisa for your questions. Those were both excellent questions, and I really hope you'll be on next week with more. And anyone else watching will bring a question as well. Thank you very much.